Welcome to r slash relationship advice, where OP's fiance asks her to be in a throuple. My brother is married to and cheating on my female best friend, and I'm conflicted if I should say anything. My best friend Pam and my brother Jim got married two years ago. I recently discovered that Jim is cheating on Pam with a college friend of mine. This friend posted a picture of my brother's back laying in bed with her on her Snapchat. I'm assuming most people thought it was just some random guy, but Jim has a tattoo of my name and my younger sister's name on his left shoulder. I immediately confronted him and demanded an explanation, and he admitted that he'd been having an affair for the last two months. I was appalled, but decided not to say anything due to Jim's pleading. I've been having a very hard time choosing to stay quiet or not. I didn't have a great childhood. My dad was out of the picture. Mom was there, but she had some mental health issues that render her, let's just say, unable to be fully attentive. Jim stepped up. He served as a parent for so much of my life. He practically raised me and my sister. If not for him being in my life, honestly, I probably would have starved to death or ended up on the streets. I don't think I could just betray him like that. On the other hand, Pam is my best friend. We've been best friends since we were 17. If my girlfriend had been cheating on me and Pam knew, she'd tell me. She deserves to know what Jim is doing, but I'm just unsure if I can out Jim like this. What should I do? And then OP posted an update. Thanks for all the help I got in my last post. As much as it pained me to do so, I decided to do the right thing. Pam should know that my brother is cheating on her. I decided to give Jim a chance. I called him and told him that I can't keep his secret. It was tearing me up inside to do so. I couldn't think about anything else. I told him I loved him so much, but I couldn't let him do this to someone that I love like family. He begged me to reconsider. He didn't try to guilt me or anything, but he did say that he needs his younger brother to just be there for him. I told him I couldn't. I asked him what he would want if it was me getting cheated on or our little sister getting cheated on. He said that he understood that it's wrong, but he was just exploring himself. I told him that's no excuse. I told him that he had until that evening to tell Pam, and if he didn't, then I would have to. I then hung up and just waited. At 11 p.m., I called Pam and struck up a normal conversation. I asked her how things were with my brother. She said it was all fine and that they were even thinking about having kids. I really couldn't believe my brother made me do this, but I had to tell her. I told her what I saw. She was livid and she refused to believe me. Luckily, I was able to show her the screenshot of my brother being in someone else's bed. She then told me that she needed to hang up. I haven't heard anything from my brother, but as of today, Pam is leaving him. So I guess that's good. She won't have to be hurt by him like that, and I can be there for her. My brother hasn't answered any of my calls or texts, so I don't know when we'll talk again. At least I still have Pam and my sister, I guess. OP, I know it was tough, but I think you did the right thing. Not saying anything is the exact same thing as condoning the behavior, and that's not the type of behavior anyone should condone. My girlfriend has been sleeping with my roommate. Apparently, this has been going on for a while. I've been dating her for over a year, and I'll confess, I'm not very good in bed, but I try. I love her, and I thought our relationship was great. Then, last night, I saw her screwing my roommate. My best friend, who I thought I could count on. I'm socially awkward, so I don't have that many other friends, but I thought that I didn't need any more as long as I had him. I saw them openly going at it in the living room, and I couldn't help but stare in disbelief. Then, I heard my roommate tell my girlfriend to keep it down so as to not wake me up. She responded by saying that I'd never heard them before, so this has clearly been going on for a while. Now, as I said before, I'm not very good in the bedroom mainly because of my small size. I've always been insecure about this. Seeing my girlfriend cheat on me has amplified this considerably. I don't know what to do. It won't be easy to find a new place to stay and get out of my lease. My family's abusive, so they're not an option. My few other friends are closer to my roommate than me, and I wouldn't call them confidence of mine. And I've emotionally invested a lot into my girlfriend. She was my first one. I can't pretend that I didn't see what I saw, but I don't know how to get out of my apartment. And if I do, I'm going to be all alone. I'm already dealing with the pain from being betrayed by the two people I thought I could trust and from my personal insecurities. I'm terrified at the prospect of being completely alone as well. And then OP posted an update. 
First of all, thanks to everyone. Wow, there were some rather unpleasant responses, like the guy who called me a wussy for being upset, or the woman who messaged me to say that if I couldn't satisfy my girlfriend, I should let better men do it because she deserved it. The overwhelming majority were kind and sympathetic. I couldn't respond to most because there were so many, but I assure you, you're appreciated. I talked to my landlord, who was sympathetic, and offered me another apartment if I continued paying my lease. It's an informal arrangement where I'm still legally residing and paying for my old apartment, but staying in another. As expected, my now former friends took my old roommate's side, and I've cut them out of my life. I'm not doing the best I could be mentally. I'm all alone and dealing with personal insecurities, loneliness, and heartbreak. Still, at least I'm out of my earlier situation. I've taken a week off of work and arranged to see a therapist. All in all, my situation isn't great, but it's unlikely to get worse, and I'm working on improving it. I'm a 30-year-old woman, and my 33-year-old husband has been cheating on me with my best friend, and asked me tonight if I want to be in a thruple. Okay, let me start out by saying F2020. My husband lost his job in April and has been home, while I've been working extra shifts making $12 an hour to keep us from going broke. Yes, I've been out of the house more than at home. Yes, I haven't been super active in bed because I'm really exhausted all the time from working 70 hours a week standing on my feet all 70 hours. I thought he'd appreciate that I'm working so we have things like food and a place to live. Instead, he and my best friend have been passionately hugging while I've been at work. She lost her job too. They've always gotten along with each other and I've never felt jealous or threatened that they've hung out together just the two of them over the years. One very drunk night in 2009, she and I did make out, but it was just a one-time thing and I didn't enjoy it. I thought I could trust them and that they were just friends. Obviously, I'm an idiot. Enough backstory. I came home tonight and found them snuggling on the couch watching TV. Like, in a spooning position, but it was very obvious it was intimate. They didn't panic, but she sat up. Then he sat up. At this point, I felt my stomach turn into a rock and I felt dizzy. No lie, my body went into some kind of shock. I just walked to the bathroom and closed the door and sat on the toilet. I just started crying after I have no idea how long. I threw up. I heard them whisper talking, but couldn't make out what they were saying. But then they knocked on the bathroom door and asked if I was okay, and I told them obviously effing not. They didn't backpedal or deny anything. They didn't admit to passionately hugging then, but my best friend said we should all probably talk about what's going on. I stayed in the bathroom and we talked through the door. That's when my husband said, Okay, yes, we didn't want you to find out like this, but we've been in a relationship since July. He said some more things, but I honestly can't remember them because my ears were kind of ringing. And I kept thinking about him saying the word relationship. This wasn't a fling or a one night stand. I could maybe forgive that, but a real relationship? Isn't marriage supposed to mean that just you and I are in a relationship? So he says whatever, and then my best friend says, So, what do you think? I missed everything he said, obviously, so I told her and she said, So, you missed the part about all three of us living together? After me asking, what? My husband clarified that she would stay on the couch, but they'd keep each other company during the day, and I could be with her too if I wanted. She knows I don't want this because we would have made out more than that one time in 2009, right? I know she needs to move out of her place because she has no job and therefore no rent money. I told her in the past that she could always crash at my place, but I never meant like this. How could she not know that? Is my best friend an idiot? Am I an idiot? I need advice. Yes, tell me that I'm an idiot for trusting them and having bad judgment and not doing my wifely duties. I own all of those things. I just need help figuring out the next steps. I do not want to be in a thruple, and I don't even want to look at either of them. It's 3.30 a.m. and I can't sleep, and I don't know what to do. I feel like I've been used. I don't know whether or not that if I leave, I'd have to pay my husband's expenses because he's not working, which would mean that I'm paying for them to have a relationship, which idiot me has been doing since July, and I really hate my life right now. First of all, OP, the thing you need to do is stop beating yourself up. It's not your fault your husband cheated on you with your best friend. It's their fault. So my advice to you is pretty simple. Leave your broke, cheating husband with your broke, traitorous friend. 
If you ask me, I don't think that they really want you to be in their throuple. I think they just want you to keep funding their deadbeat lifestyles. My 25-year-old male fiancé spent our entire savings to buy a gaming PC. We'd been saving for our wedding and honeymoon. What's worse is that ever since he got the PC, he's totally ignored me and has absolutely forgotten that I even exist in his life. My fiancé and I got engaged in December last year. In January of this year, we both decided to save money every month for our wedding and honeymoon. In six months, we saved around $8,000. Last month, my fiancé's best friend bought a new gaming PC, so my fiancé wanted to buy one, so he asked me. But I denied it because we both already had laptops. I told him that he can play games on the laptop that he already has. He repeatedly kept asking me if he could buy a PC, and I finally agreed to it. Now, I regret it so badly. After a week, the PC finally came, and with the PC, a new table and chair were also delivered. Apparently, he had ordered a gaming chair and a table as well. That night, I asked him how much it all cost, and he was a little hesitant to tell me. After a while, he told me, and I was distraught when I heard that he had spent our entire savings of $8,000 to buy the PC. We had a very big argument that night, and I scolded him for spending all of our savings because those savings contained not only his money, but my money as well. And we were saving it for our wedding. After everything I told him, his final reply was, I'll earn it all back soon. I don't trust those words at all. I thought nothing worse than this could happen, but it has. It's been about two weeks since he got the PC, and since then, my fiancé hasn't gotten up from his new chair. Ever since he got the PC, he hasn't even seen my face. The only time that he talks to me is when he's hungry. He calls to me and tells me to get him something to eat or drink. I call him to watch TV and he denies me, saying that he's busy. I call him to sleep together and he denies it and says that he'll sleep later. His sleep schedule's been completely screwed up. He plays games the whole night and sleeps at 5am and wakes up at 2pm. He's asleep when I'm awake and he's awake when I'm asleep. For the past two weeks, I've been so lonely that it feels like I'm alone at home without even anybody to talk to. He's ignoring me so much that I think he's absolutely forgotten that I even exist in his life. I honestly feel like his waitress nowadays because for the past two weeks, the only interaction we both have is him asking for food and water and me giving it to him. He's also 100% stopped doing all the house chores. For the past two weeks, I've been the one doing all the house chores and it's getting very hard for me to do it all alone. We used to share our responsibilities and do all the house chores together, but from the past two weeks, he isn't even taking care of himself. He's barely even brushing his teeth and taking a bath, let alone do the house chores. Also, he's actually supposed to be working from home, but ever since the PC arrived, he hasn't even touched his laptop to work, and he isn't even checking his phone to see if someone called or texted him about work. I'm now genuinely afraid that he might lose his job. Everything that's happening right now is so bad. I called my parents and told them about it last night, and they had almost nothing to say. I'm thinking of calling his parents tonight and telling it to them, and maybe they can knock some sense into him. I honestly don't know what else to do now. I want to burn that PC. It would be very nice if someone suggested me doing something about this. Thank you very much for reading this, and thank you very much in advance of your comments and suggestions. Alright, OP, <laughs> let me offer you a little bit of perspective. So, as a professional YouTuber, I built myself a pretty powerful PC. I've got two state-of-the-art video cards, like five hard drives, an extremely powerful CPU, three monitors, an absolute ton of video and audio equipment. To the left of me is a camera that I got because I might want to do on-screen content at some point, and it alone costs like $1,500. But all of this stuff, the computer, the three monitors, the camera, the audio equipment, my desk, all of that still doesn't add up to $8,000. I mean, for an $8,000 computer, you would have to buy the absolute top-end piece of equipment for every single computer part. What your boyfriend did was insanely unreasonable for someone who only had $8,000 in savings. I guarantee you that he could have built a top-end computer for $1 to $2,000, and I know this because I just did it. I'm personally not a big fan of reciting famous quotes, but one that I always find myself going back to is from Maya Angelou. When someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. OP, you said you want to burn the computer, but the computer isn't the problem. Your fiancé has given you a gift by showing you who he really is deep down. 
All I can say to that is please listen to what he's telling you and realize that he's not the guy for you. I'm a 31 year old male in a submissive relationship with my girlfriend and I just realized she doesn't actually love me. My girlfriend of one and a half years and I follow a female led relationship. It's basically a lifestyle fetish thing. Without being too specific, I've basically dedicated my life to making her happy in a seemingly selfless way. It's not really selfless, I guess, because I enjoy it myself, but that's all I get from it. She controls all the finances. We only do stuff if she wants to do it. We never do what I want. Passionate hugging is only for her. I do all the chores, etc. The whole relationship is basically about double standards that benefit her and that don't benefit me, to put it simply. But that's just how our relationship is. I've struggled with it at times, but I enjoy it overall. I have a sciatica issue with my back. It's normally not a big deal, but over the weekend, I seriously screwed it up. It was totally agonizing and I had to go to the hospital. My girlfriend was completely unsupportive and didn't care about me at all. She told me to power through the pain, but I was like rolling around in pain almost. It was clearly impossible. I called her by her first name by accident and she yelled at me for being disrespectful. I had to drive myself to the hospital because she wouldn't let me use the phone. She was just completely annoyed about the whole thing. I think she told me that she hopes I catch the virus, but I wasn't sure. I was out of it as I was leaving the house. They gave me some muscle relaxers in the hospital and I'm doing better now, but I'm trying not to exert myself too much until the disc completely goes back into place. Also, while she does sometimes treat me badly as part of our role, she didn't seem to be doing that here. I mean, she knew it was serious, and I think she just revealed exactly how she felt. I always thought that even though we had this relationship, she did actually care about me. But because of the way our relationship was, it didn't come out much. She loved me in her own way, I thought. But these last days, I realized that she actually just views me as a literal servant. She doesn't care about me as a person, only as a submissive partner. Even calling it a partnership doesn't make sense. Maybe this is the wrong place to post this, but I wanted to get a vanilla perspective with people that have normal, healthy relationships. Am I overthinking this? Do you think I might be able to make the relationship work long term? And if you dabbled in this lifestyle, I'd be curious to hear if you've had any similar experiences. Thanks. OP, I think you're confusing dominance with abuse. Your girlfriend isn't respecting your limits or concerned about your health and well-being. Don't let the female-led relationship stuff confuse you. Your girlfriend is super toxic. That was our slash relationship advice, and if you like this content, then check out my Patreon where I publish episodes that were banned from YouTube. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.